What's up, Mitch? Maria's is not here. What's up, Danny? What's happening, Joe? How are you? <clears throat> Hi, Mitch. Peachy. Hi, sorry, this is Marie. I was on the phone with the State Department of Health. So, you know, let's make my day. Sounds like fun. Oh yeah, I live for this stuff, you know? I'm prepared for this meeting, Marie, by the way. Versus uh, yeah. The <laughs> I want one too. Hey, Marie, it's, Dan it's Marie, it's Danny, testing my audio. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. No, Thank I can't you. hear you, Danny, sorry. All right, I'm going back on mute because I'm frying a chicken cutlet. I'll be right back. <laughs> I am letting people in one at a time. Members first. Anybody else? They're going to have to wait. And uh, oh, oh my God. And once we start doing this, I have to. Oh my God, where is that stupid thing to uh, record? Well, I have. It's recording now. I just have to do live feed on Facebook, but uh, I'm going to wait till we actually start the meeting. Okay. So, are you going to be giving the report for uh, Dr. Redliner? I mean, if he's, if he's on the call, I'll let him do it, but if not, I have it up right in front of me. Thank you, thank you. I think this meeting is going to be, hopefully, pretty quick. It's... Uh, really going to be doing more nominating committee than anything else. The one item we had on our ambulance is, uh, was tabled by the Department of Health, so. Okay. Dominic, I like your little Yoda baby. Oh, that's actually a selfie, but yeah, it does kind of look like <laughs> Dominic, that looks just like you. Exactly. You guys are sick. That's why I'm letting my hair grow out a little bit. So I Me too. Cover, cover up those ears. <laughs> <laughs> See, we had someone, a beautician, come to the backyard, and we had a bunch of people, and my yard was filled with hair. She just gave everybody haircuts. Doesn't help much, but at least it's not below my shoulders anymore. Okay. I have to tell you, did these meetings on Zoom make me crazy? Why? It's just, they stress me out. I feel better when I'm talking to people face to face. Don't be I feel, it's not worth it. 
Oh, this is the last meeting and I'm starting my vacation tomorrow. Oh, that sounds good. You're going away? No, no. Where are we going to go? You can travel anywhere these days. Yeah, I can't go. I can't go anywhere. You just can't come home. I you have can go pool. wherever you want. You just can't come home. Yeah. That's right. Stay where you are. You got the beach behind you, palm trees. Stay there. That's it. Well, I have a pool, so I'm just like hanging out. And I've, all right, uh, I'm coming over, Marie. You're all invited. Come on over. I love it. <laughs> okay. So far, we have eight people in the meeting. Okay, we'll let him in finally. I don't want what happened at REMAC to happen. So the registering process is actually just registering with Zoom, right? Is that it? Having an account? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's all it is. I was wondering why I couldn't do find something different. That's what I was uh, trying to figure it out, but I got it. I'm here. And we've tried so hard to keep you from the meeting, Dominic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and it just a, didn't work. You know what? It's it's one of the easiest things to do. It's just <laughs> say just say the word. <laughs> it's so easy. I know well, the feeling. Is, I know the feeling. This is going to be your last meeting, right? Because now you're going to make Bill come all by himself, all by his yeah. lonesome. I, I, yeah, I, I have a funny feeling it'll still be uh, taking the ride out there together. It's, it's, it's something to do on Tuesday nights, you know. Yeah, that's what it is. Hey, look, Brian's got a nice picture, so that he always looks good. Yeah, I'm driving still, so I don't want to get anyone motion sickness with all the uh, the trees going by at 90. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm just uh, waiting for Dr. Langsom to get here. Oh, we have 13 minutes, so. What's this? We got 12 people here so far. I'm, I'm sort of afraid to start sending this to Facebook. God help me. Uh, just do it. Yeah, actually, the, the REMAC meeting, except for those two or three crazy people that I had to throw off, um, we had a lot of really great comments and the people in the, um, in the, the audience, the field, a lot of field people were on there and, uh, they, they asked questions. I like, the, participating. I like, I like the fact that we can have these meetings on zoom and more people can attend. It's kind yeah. Of I had some people uh, tell me that, uh, they thought it was accidentally broadcast. They got all excited oh. watching it, thinking it was accidentally broadcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> nope. So far, the winning background is Billy Goffin. He looks like Anderson Cooper right now with that city background. Come on, you gotta be original, people. Put something fancy. Marie is. I'm almost jealous she's on the islands. I have a whole <laughs> nice behind me. Moving on up. <laughs> I see. But that is a pretty cool background. Thank you. I have somebody in the waiting room that's just a phone number and I'm not admitting them until I know who they are. What's the phone number? 347-3775-875. I think you could uh, text people in or e uh, message people in the, in the waiting yeah, room. Yeah, I just did. That's, uh, okay. It's Dennis Flurry. It's, that's Dennis Laurie? Yes. 
Okay. He's across the office from me yelling, tell Marie that's me. There we go. I see his name on the screen. How many Dennis Lorries are there? Hopefully there's only one. Hopefully, yeah. Hey, Mitch, how are you? I'm good, Dom. How's everything? So, Dennis, yeah. you're 347? Yeah, Marie, I, why don't you just sit in my office and you could just stop with the nonsense? Yeah, I'm going to turn mine off. I'll just I'll log in next to Mitch. <laughs> okay. I'm just very suspicious of everybody right now. I don't let anybody in. Yeah, we heard what happened. There's no microphone on my computer, so I have to dial in if I if that say anything. Wow, NYU you doesn't give a you a microphone? On. You know, James Downey's in the waiting room by a show of hands. Who wants me to keep him out? <laughs> okay. Let's let, let's let him in. We're all going to be on the blanket. Okay. It's... Well, this is good. Hi, Marie. Hey, Benny. How are you? So far, so good. This is our last, last meeting of the calendar year for us. Yes, it is. Makes me happy. Then we go on a summer vacation, just like what's right behind you with the waves. Yeah, yeah. Except we'll never be allowed to come home. Yeah, right? How's Michael been? He's doing fine. He's doing fine. That's good. Come on, let's go, machine. Sorry, I'm just starting to go live on Facebook. God help us. I hear you. Oh, we're going live on Facebook? Yeah, we were live on Facebook for Remac too. Pretty frightening. Yeah, right? You know, you've got a lot of people participating, so. Let's go. Let's go city. Remember 20 years ago, 20 years ago, nobody wanted to do this, right? Remember that? Yeah, I know. I know. No, we we had a pole teeth, right? Now look at us. I know people fight to be on these committees now, so. Yeah. No, that's good. New young blood, man. That's what we need. New young blood. Okay. So now I'm just going to Facebook on my phone. Okay, well, hopefully we're live streaming and let me see, is there anybody else? Um, okay, 19 people here so far. Hi, Marie. Hi, who's that? Uh, it's Joe, no, it's Joe Marcelino. Hi, Joe, how you doing? Uh, hanging in there. Uh, do we have an agenda for this meeting? We're uh, basically going to be doing a, a just straight to regional council meeting because we don't have any, well, we might have some, you know, give me a second. Let me just pull up that agenda for ambulance. Yeah, I guess something on uh, Bensonhurst I, I saw. Actually, that was tabled by the Department of Health. So, um, On. Okay, Joe, I'm, I'm going to just uh, send you through chat what's on your agenda. All right, thank you.
Zoom is not letting him in. Hmm. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, give me a second. I have to send somebody a link. Just email it to me. Marie, yeah. I think you sent it to the wrong Joe. Hmm. Uh, oi, what are you talking about? The, um, the new Oh, I sent it to agenda. the wrong. Uh, okay. You sent it to me and not to the other Joe. Okay, just hold on a second. I got to send. Okay, where is this thing? Just can't win. Can't win. <laughs> Okay. Okay. What's that? Oh, I just sent it to the wrong show. Okay. There you go. Now I went to the right person. All right. Thank you. No problem. Okay. I have someone asking me how to register. And I'm not sure who, who registered. It was just going to the Zoom site to register. Did you do it through the link? Murray, when you clicked on the link, it asked you to put your information in. So just click on the link. They should put their name and their email address in. Okay, thanks. I actually had to download the app, put in my birthday and email. So if that helps. Okay. Thank you. That was special for you, Grace. Nobody else I had to do that. <laughs> we tried desperately to keep you from the meeting, but it didn't work. I tried, I know. <laughs> Understandable. We all know how FDNY is hated. No, oh, stop. Say that. That's not fair. Just click on the link. Click on the link. I still get a paycheck from them, so I like them. Oh, okay. Mm. Only because of the paycheck. You see, we Damn had to straight. buy the love. Damn straight. Do you have one of those for all of us? If you want, anybody's invited. <laughs> yeah, it's not fair. We all want one. Okay, admit, admit, admit. You know, when a beer doesn't cut it, you just need to have a bourbon and a beer. <laughs> you know it's a good meeting. Oh. Well, tell us about your day, Joe. <laughs> oh, it's been rough. I was on a con I've been on conference calls all day. It really cuts into my golf game. <laughs> I noticed. And Glenn made another trade. At least I'm not the only one drinking during this run still meeting. Guys are bad. Okay. So. Okay. Marie, can you please mute everybody? Everybody is muted. Well, everyone's supposed to be muted.
everybody is not. Okay, I got to find you now and unmute you. So hold on one second. Edit. Dismiss all. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I got to find you. You did ya. Why is this stupid thing not letting me go down the page? That's why. Okay, I'm I'm unmuted. Okay. Marie, we do not see you. We just see your beautiful background. I wonder if you're trying to give us a hint. Believe me, the background looks better than I do right now. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, you want to go down the participant list to see if we have a quorum? Yes. I just need to find out. There are two numbers here, and I don't know who these people are. So, message people in waiting room. Okay, tell me who you are. You are to gain entry. Okay. Dominic, why are you upside down? Okay. okay, I don't know who, okay, Don Johnson, Don Johnson. Does anybody know who a Don Hudson is? How about, okay, here's Scott. Yeah, I don't know who these numbers are. Don't let them in. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not letting them in because I'm not sure. They can uh, watch it on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they can also comment on Facebook, so. Come on, come on. I just want to see. Where's this stupid thing? Regional Council. Hmm. Okay, and we are live now. Okay, did you? Okay. Arthur Cooper says, uh, is he on? Do you see him? He chatted something. I thought I saw Art Cooper on. Okay. Yeah, he's here. He's there, okay. Right. Tell Dr. Dr. Cooper you cannot unmute yourself. Nobody can unmute themselves. Only Marie is gonna unmute people as they raise their hand. Okay. okay. So that, um, let's see if we have a quorum and then we can do it officially. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to pull up my attendance list and I'm going to call names. I'm going to unmute everybody right now. Okay. And uh, all I hear is elevator music. I don't have elevator music on. I'm going to unmute everybody just for this attendance, and then we're going to mute everyone again. Okay. A as I call your name, just please. Uh, can you explain to Art Cooper that if he's on mute, he can still hear? He says he's hearing elevator music, but let's just get the attendance done. I cannot hear. You, you can't hear? Well, that's what Art said. Oh, okay. This is the Regional EMS Council of New York City meeting for June 30th, 2020. Please uh, respond when your name is called. Doug Jacobs. Doug Jacobs, Ari Weiss. Present. Okay. Grace Cacciola. Here. Lillian Bonsignor. Christine Mazzola. <coughs> Christine Mazzola. Bradley Kaufman. 
Samia McEachin. Marie, I think some people are still muted. Um, I think what people have to realize is that when you allow them to unmute themselves, they still have to actively do it. Okay, yeah, you all, if you're, you're all unmuted on my side, so if you want to talk, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, and let me add in Dr. Krupe. Okay. Okay, folks, let's, uh, okay. Samia McEachin from Greater New York. I know she's here, I see her. Uh, Allison Burke. Dominic Batnelli is here. I'm here. Bill Goffin is here. Okay. Joseph Marcelino is here and Danny Mizells is somewhere cooking a chicken cutlet. But. <laughs> Marie, uh, I think everybody's still muted. You have to you have to hit the button again, and then right when you do that, they have to hit the unmute. Okay, I just pressed it again. Everybody is unmuted, so unmute yourselves. That's better. Okay. Okay. Morty Goldfeder or Robert Bristol? Rob is here. Thanks, Rob. Rob, you watch the road now, man. John Johnstone. I know you're here. I see you. Yeah. Okay. And um, sorry. Okay. Tra wow. Travis Kessel. Here. James Downey. Here. Gary Gelbard. Here. David Mekatansky. I know he's here because I saw him. Joseph Schenker. Here. David Benelli. He's still muted. Dr. Benelli is muted. I've unmuted everybody five times. Uh, no, but Marie, it's uh, not, yeah, I managed to find on their so, own. Uh, they can only do it when uh, you here. allow them to. The way it's set up oh, right now, oh, oh, oh. Is when you allow them to unmute themselves, they have to click the button right then. They okay. do not have the ability to unmute themselves. Okay, sorry, sorry. Let me uh, let me fix this. Oh my god! No, don't leave it on. Okay, I cannot figure out how to do that. Marie, do you want to give me the control? I'll, I'll fix it. I have a, a, okay, no, I just did it. It's okay. Everyone should be able to unmute themselves now. Oh, yeah. There we go. Sorry. It's going to take me a while before I get used to this thing. Scott Olansky. Okay, uh, Marie, you yeah. got me. Uh, I'm going to mute myself again. Yes, David, I have you. Scott Olansky. Scott is here. Morty Lax. Here. Martina Barcarella. Here. Vinny Barranco. Here. Mr. Benedetto. Art Cooper. Rob, uh, Robert Krupe. Here. Megan Farley. Here. Mantra Fuchs. I'm here. Sean Graves. Here. John uh, Jerry Gumbo. Here. Yazidja Langsom. Present. Brian Levisky. Here. Dennis Laurie. Here. Mitchell Powell. Here. Okay. So that's it. Okay, let me just save this and we have a we have a quorum. I am muting everybody right now. Uh, unless can you all just mute yourselves? Oh, they won't. Just mute everybody. Oh, okay. You're all muted. Okay. Okay. Everybody's muted. And okay. Everyone, me... should able, everyone should be able to hear me. And when you want to speak, we'll do what we did last time. If you're new and have never used Zoom, on the bottom of your screen, there is a button called participants, which currently shows that there are 36 participants on the list. If you click that on the side of your screen, will open up a list of everybody who's there and you can raise your hand. 
when we see you raising your hand, then Marie will unmute you as we recognize you. For those who also want to chat in the background, okay, then you can press the chat button on the bottom, but I'm not monitoring that, although that will be saved. And as everyone knows, this meeting is being both recorded and being live streamed on Facebook as we speak. So there are probably hundreds of people watching what we do here, be aware. I've got a lot of emails saying hello to me after the last meeting. Okay, I hope this will be the last Zoom meeting and that the next meeting in September we'll be able to all get together. Uh, let's just remember the ground rules that the governor has allowed us to have official meetings via teleconference as we're doing right now. However, we A, must have a um, quorum, which we've just determined. B, we must record it and we must have it open for the public, which we are doing because we really can't tell who is voting. And I don't know if Marie knows how to do polls and other such stuff. Every, unfortunately, every time we need to take a vote, we're gonna have to go through a roll call vote. So that's unfortunate, it may take a little bit time. So the first thing on the agenda is the approval of the April 28th, 2020 meeting. These were men mailed out and we're going to have to go a roll call vote again and keep on going voting to make sure that I assume we have a motion to accept. Um, uh, if anyone wants to make any comments, corrections, please raise your hand. I see nobody raising their hand on the screen. Uh, just an explanation why you all had to register this time. For those who were on the REMAC meeting last time, we were Zoom bombed. Um, it was quite unfortunate and distracting. Uh, luckily, Marie was able to throw them all off, but uh, there is a um, possibility that we could be Zoom bombed some more, so therefore Marie is not letting anyone in whom she doesn't recognize. Okay, Marie, please take a roll call vote for the approval of the minutes. Unmute everybody, and people, if you have noise in the background, please turn it off, put your dogs away, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's get this meeting going and go home. Okay, Marie, go. Unmute everybody. Ready home. Yeah, well. You didn't unmute yourself. Sorry, okay. Okay, this is to vote for uh, to approve the minutes of the April 28th meeting. All right. So, uh, Ari Weiss. Approved. Samia McEachin. Samia McEachin. Yes. Approved. Dominic Batnelli. Approved. Yeah, as you vote, turn yourself uh, on mute. Grace Cacciola? Approved. Christine Mazzola? Christine Mazzola, I know I let her into the meeting. Approved. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can Joe you Marcelino? Approved. Uh, John Johnstone? Approved. Robert Bristol? Robert Approved. Bristol? Approved, sorry. That's okay. Travis Kessel? Approved. Jerry Gelbard? Approved. Joseph Schenker? Approved. Scott Olansky? Approved. Morty Lax? Approved. Martina Baccarella? Approved. Vincent Branco? Approved. Nancy Benedetto? Approved. Art Cooper. Robert Krupe. Approved. Megan Farley. Approved. Manfred Fuchs. Approved. John Graves. Approved. Jerry Gumbo. Approved. 
Yadidja Langsam? Approved. Dennis Laurie? Approved. Brian Levinsky? Approved. Mitch Powell? Approved. Okay, so it is unanimous. Thank you very much, Marie. Please mute everybody again. Okay. The next okay. item on the agenda is the correspondence. Oh, gosh darn it. You said you're muted. No, no, I'm not. Okay, let me continue. So on the correspondence report, the first item is regarding membership. We'll get to that a little bit later in the agenda, so I'm going to skip over that now. There's no new information from Sydney. Um, from the New York State Department of Health, um, instructor certification extension email affirming one-year extension for non-expired certifications. All course sponsor renewals have been extended to September 30th, 2020. A copy of a letter sent to Ryan Greenberg from LaGuardia Community College stating multiple courses cannot be completed due to college campuses not allowing students to enter classrooms or conduct training off-site. I can confirm that that is true. Copy of a letter sent to Ryan Greenberg from ALS course sponsors asking that guidance for PSEs be put into written policy. Okay, now we move on with received from ambulance agencies. Um, VAC boundary maps were submitted. We received a copy of the charges from New York State DOH against Benzner's VAC. However, we will not discuss this this evening as the Department of Health is working on negotiating behind the scenes. So this will be brought forward a little bit further. Um, a request for TOA by Park Slope VAC. I believe this is of the same issue, so we will not discuss that further. We've received a letter from Bedford Stuyvesant VAC stating that neither John Warwick nor Shanida Robinson are associated with this agency. Further, neither individual is empowered to represent Bedford Stuyvesant at VAC. Okay, we're not discussing this at this meeting until the Department of Health discusses, decides what to do. Course sponsor renewals, we already said, were extended. We've received multiple communications from course college-based courses requesting assistance in meeting PSE requirements since campuses are closed to students. Now, the Office of the Council sent out agenda minutes and associated attachments for the meeting. Okay, has anyone have any questions on the correspondence report? Please raise your hand. I see no hands going up. We're going to move to the next part of the meeting. The next part of the meeting is the elections, reappointment of organizational and at-large seats, the nominating committee, okay, met, hold on, on Wednesday, June 17, 2019, no, a 2020, okay, Marie, they didn't meet in 2019. Wednesday, June 17, 2020, at 3 p.m., the nominating committee members are Gerald Gilbard, Morty Lacks, Scott Olansky, Anthony Salish, Michael Jones, and Jack Kish. Notice it's a mixture of members of the council as well as the members of the board. The primary function of the nominating committee, okay, is to nominate and review people for appropriate election. Okay, the following were recommended for reappointment as at-large members beginning July 1st, 2020. This is reappointment. Vincent Barranco, Sean Graves, Jerry Gumbo, and Michael S. Powell. Okay, I see nobody objection, no one objecting yet. Okay, then we move to the members, these terms, the members terms are for four years, ending June 30th, 2024. The following were recommended for reappointment to organizational representatives beginning July 1st, 2020. Okay, and I'm just gonna read the names. We, go, we do have to approve it, but we don't really have much to say about it. Um, so Greater New York, Samia McEachin, primary and Allison Burke, alternate. Gray, New York, William Goffin, primary and Dominic Bartonelli, alternate. NYPD, 
Jonathan Matamoros primary and John Johnstone alternate. New York City EM, uh, Robert Bristol primary and Michael Goldfeda alternate. New York City H plus H, Health and Hospital, Daniel Maisel's primary and Joseph Marcelino alternate. Again, the member terms are for four years ending June 30th, 2024. Is there any objection to any here? We're gonna take a poll and a vote, but since I don't hear anyone raising their hand. Okay. Now, normally we would do this as a second, but to save time, okay, we're also recommending the following as REMSCO officers. Myself, Yudhidi Langsam, to reappoint as chair, Dr. Robert Krupe to reappoint as first vice chair, Michael Powell reappoint as parliamentarian, and Martina Barcelona as new appointment as secretary. The officer's terms are for two years, ending June 30th, 2022. We're now ready to either have a discussion and I see nobody raising their hand. Therefore, Marie, please unmute everybody and folks, unmute yourself and then mute yourself immediately so that we don't get headed. Go ahead. You did you? Could I just ask a question at Scott Orlansky? You did you? Yes. Are members of the nominating committee allowed to vote or do we have to abstain? No, you're certainly allowed to vote. You can vote. You understand that you're not voting for yourself. You have to abstain, Scott. Understood. From, from everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's safer that way. <laughs> oh, God, I need that drink. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, please respond in favor, against, or abstain. Very professional. <laughs> Okay, uh, Ali Weitz. In favor. Samia McKeechen. In favor. Dominic Gattinelli. In favor. Grace Cacciola. In favor. Christine Mazzola. In favor. Joseph Marcelino. In favor. Daniel Rodri uh, John Johnstone. In favor. Robert Bristol. In favor. Travis Kessel. In favor. Jerry Gelbard. In favor. Joseph Schenker. I'm in favor, but I don't know about this Langsome guy. Hey. <laughs> I know, I know. He doesn't like himself either. <laughs> Scott in favor. Okay. Scott, you are allowed to vote. Well, I couldn't hear you. In favor. Thank you. Uh, Morty Lax. I doesn't even know what he's favor. voting for. Okay. Martina Baccarella. In favor. Vincent Barranco. In favor. Art Cooper. In favor. Yay. Robert Krupe. In favor. Megan Farley. In favor. Manfred Fuchs. In favor. Sean Graves. In favor. Jerry Gumbo. In favor. Dennis Laurie. In favor. Brian Levinsky. In favor. Mitch Powell. In favor. And last but not least, you did your Langsome. In favor. Okay, so we have unanimous approval. You uh, did not call me. I didn't call you. You did not. Nancy Benedetto. In favor. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Oh my God. Nancy, that was on purpose. I, all right. Joe right. told me to do it. <laughs> Please mute everybody again. Oh my goodness. Okay. Tell me the professor. Hold on, let me unmute you. Who is giving the report of the emergency preparedness? Is Scott Chang doing it? Hold on a second. Um. Yes, I'm doing it. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, since the last report out, the PPE pot has been demobilized. A cache of PPE is now kept at District 4, Jamaica stays back, and District 18, Glen Oaks back. 
Uh, any vax needing PPE can reach out to Jim Downey or Jerry Galbar uh, to arrange for the delivery. Uh, REMSCO staff also attended training with the New York City OEM to familiarize the platform OEM will use to virtually staff the hack during coastal storm. End of report. Thank you very much. Uh, Marie, are you giving the program agency update? Uh, yeah, let me just pull up my report. Okay. Okay. Come on, let's go. Sorry, just give me a second because nothing ever works right when you're doing meetings. Okay, reports. Um, okay. We actually just had our meeting today, uh, about two hours before this meeting. So I can tell you that course sponsor renewals are, are not due until December 31st, 2020. And the administrative manual is being revised, hopefully out in two weeks, we'll see. Course sponsor renewal applications are being streamlined and no longer will be required to send in separate policies for each course type. And uh, the renewal applications will be out in September. Um, for our ambulance agencies, agencies will be receiving information electronically and only electronic submissions will be accepted. And that's for uh, agency renewals and, and any other kind of information. And the Department of Health is happy to say that they're back up to speed with investigations. Um, certification cards are being processed. I'm not sure what that means, whether you'll be getting paper cards or electronic. Uh, we'll get that information from the Department of Health, hopefully within the next few weeks. Um, Ryan Greenberg and Steve, uh, I can never pronounce his last name. Well, they're the leadership of the State Department of Health and they've been asked to be added to all REMSCO meeting announcements. They'll be popping in from time to time. Um, for vital signs, we're not sure what's happening. There'll be more info uh, in mid-July. Uh, the vital signs, uh, uh, the educational courses that they have on the Vital Signs Academy are very good. They're getting between 100 and 150 people per session. So anyone that wants to help create education, please contact me or contact uh, the Department of Health. And for the program agencies, we were told that the contracts were being extended for uh, 24 months. Um, we had some questions about that, that uh, we have to address it directly to uh, the contract manager and I'll be able to have more information probably after the 4th of July. And um, with regards to the college-based ALS course sponsors, uh, Ryan Greenberg did say that there was a policy being uh, developed, but we're going to have some more discussion on that. And that's all I have for right now. Okay, Marie, can you please unmute Vincent Barranco? He has his hand up. Sure. He should be able to unmute himself, but... Vincent, try to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah. Hold on. You're muted again. Nah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now you're muted again. Okay, the talk. host, the host hey, keeps muting me. Are you to get to our, our call? So, so my question is, um, with the PPE distribution of the pod, I think it was a, a great idea and it was a valuable uh, asset to, um, to agencies. But what we found is we were given four different types of N95 masks, four to five different types. And it became problematic because technically you're supposed to fit test them on the different masks. So I was wondering if there was any way of maybe putting out a, a survey that we swap some of this stuff around where I have brand X of N95s and I have brand Y of N95s and I'll give you your Ys for your Xs. Is there any way that could take place just to, uh, when we get the second wave, at least we'll have a backup plan. I'm just, I was just curious. Well, I'm going to ask Scott to answer that. Um, I mean, I can give you an answer, but I think we'd better coming from him. Scott, are you still here? Do I have to unmute you? Oh, I'm here. Um, yes, um, I, that, that's a great idea, Vincent. Um, uh, the council is more than happy to facilitate uh, that kind of a swap uh, with agencies. So we'll 
I'll, I'll work something out uh, with the staff and uh, we should have a resolution. Thank you very much. Vincent. Oh, Dr. Langsom, just to let everybody know, we, we now have Ryan Greenberg in the room. So I guess under new business, if anyone has any questions for him, if he's still here, you can ask them. Does that mean we have to be more responsible when we speak? Especially you, Schenker. <laughs> um, let's continue. Um, again, please mute everybody. Uh, there is the ambulance committee did not meet. And as we said, the issue that they would have discussed is being postponed until the Department of Health finishes what they have to do. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Training and Education Committee report. Morty Lax, please unmute him and keep everyone else muted. Okay, so Training and Ed met on June 19th via Zoom. Uh, we discussed the various levels of instructor classes that were in uh, serious need of over here in the region. Uh, we've mentioned several times that we've been facing some challenges with uh, our communication with the Department of Health staff in terms of what is actually required for classes to be approved. Um, uh, Marie has sent up numerous applications, uh, especially for instructor update classes that have be been rejected um, over and over. Uh, and it appears that there's no, uh, no detail as to what is actually um, required for those classes to pass. So uh, I'm going to submit them moving forward. Um, we've decided to try and freshen things up a little bit and uh, uh, look outside of the region and see what others might have gotten approved and send up similar applications. One course we are working on right now is a, uh, a Zoom instructor update class that would um, uh, guide other instructors how to run good courses via uh, these online methods that we have here now. Um, what else did we discuss? So uh, we're, we're looking to do several instructor updates. We're looking to do a CLI class. We have to figure out uh, with the CLI class how we'll be able to facilitate um, distancing for the skill component of it. And, uh, and we're looking to do a CIC class uh, with interaction online, um, all via Zoom. Uh, so that is instructor level classes. Uh, in terms of the protocol update training, this was uh, this was discussed at Remac. We brought this to Remac. Remac uh, was we recommended to Remac that we develop a uh, protocol training that is inclusive of both a video video recording, an online exam, and uh, whatever skills are involved to be sent to the agencies as a canned product, so that uh, so that they can facilitate the skills on their own with instructions to do it, similar to what we did with the stroke program. The video recording would be uh, a hybrid similar to what the Department of Health did for the protocol update, but it would be more video driven um, with uh, the individuals interacting with uh, folks in a class so that it will uh, have a little bit more of a realistic feel to it. Um, and uh, to add a level of interaction, we will facilitate Q&A sessions that will be held live. Um, and we believe that that will help get those protocols across. We have a target date. Uh, we're hoping to have everything assembled and put together at the end of July, and uh, we'll work on that behind the scenes and report back um, before, uh, before then. Um, a couple other uh, trainings that we are looking to develop. We've begun looking at de-escalation training. Uh, I think that's going to be a hot topic now everywhere in general. Um, I know for, uh, for various police departments it's going to be, and I think we should certainly look at it as well. Um, so, so that's something we're looking at. Uh, if there's a way to interact with um, the NYPD on that, we would, we would certainly love to collaborate. Um, this would, of course, include the excited delirium protocol as well, uh, which I believe the NYPD is now aware of. Um, as, uh, as we are sedating folks in the field. Um, we want to talk about provider mental health training as well. Um, the me regional mental wellness team has been reactivated um, and training is being updated for that. Uh, general training at CME, we're looking to revive a newsletter that would show whatever projects are in process and what some of the activity of the various committees are. And that is what I have. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for Morty? Please raise your hand. I see no hands up, so we will move on to the next item on the agenda is the Regional Emergency Medical Advisory Committee, the REMAC report, Dr. Schenker. Hello, everybody. All right, let me unmute my, I'm unmuted. Perfect. The only one who didn't mute himself was Dr. Schenker. But I'm not making any noise, so that's probably not bad. 
All right, we met via Zoom on uh, May 28th. Um, here's the, the bullet points. Um, number one, the, the um, I'm sorry, I think I have the QA committee report here. No, let's just read my report. So the QA committee, I, I guess I'll discuss this during the QA report, but uh, the first watch project uh, during the, you know, we talked about the stroke STEMI study and uh, they're basically the data and the dashboard should be available by the end of the summer. Um, this is a regional dashboard. Initially, it's for the 911 system. Um, we will grow from there and increase it and try to expand it to the whole system. But right now, it's a 911 dashboard using the First Watch product to um, effectively, you know, gather our quality um, in information. Um, let's see. There will be an after action report, a New York City after action, a COVID after action report which will come um, during, um, I'm sorry, this is the wrong report. Here we go. Um, we did have some discussion about CME response re requirements. Um, this is REMAC now. Um, EMTs and paramedics will be granted a CME credit um, for two hours of category A and two hours of category B CME. Um, this was approved at REMAC. Um, essentially, that will, um, for the, the um, medical directors will have the opportunity to give two hours of A and two hours of B for coronavirus related um, experiences, so to speak. Um, so that was number one. Number two, um, the bylaws tag will be meeting over the summer. Um, that was the only motion that was passed at the REMAC, um, and that was pretty much the end of my report. Any questions? You did, we can't hear you. Now we can hear you. Any questions for Dr. Schenker? Please raise your hand. I don't hear any. Um, Dr. Schenker, are you giving the QAQI report as well? I am. Go ahead. All right, so for the, as far as the QA uh, report, um, like I said, the First Watch project is in full force. We should have um, a, a um, basically a regional dashboard, which should be available by the end of the summer. We will um, have a Zoom or a in-person conference to go over that and show that. Like I said, initially that's right now a 911 project, but we will like to expand it to the entire region uh, eventually. Um, and AHA is, is working on getting us grant funding for that. Um, from a data security perspective, um, all QA members as well as all executive committee members from both REMAC and REMSCO will be issued a REMSCO email account. Um, this will increase the security um, as well as there will be a confidentiality agreement that all of the QA committee members will sign um, because that committee does deal with PHI at times. Um, so that will all be, that is in the process of being done to ensure uh, data security. Um, uh, the after action report I mentioned already. Um, and I think that that's it. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Schenker? Please raise your hand. I see no hands being up. We'll move to the next item on the agenda. It is the state EMS council report. There is no report. They have not met. Um, and I have no idea when they will meet. Um, that brings us to unfinished business. Okay. Does anyone have, I, I'm not aware of any unfinished business. Marie, do you have anything you think we need to talk about? Um. Not really, uh, I guess it can go into new business, unfinished business. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah. Anybody have, aware of any unfinished business? Hearing none, we will move to new business. Okay, Marie, you'll start with new business. If anyone else has new business, you'll please raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Thank you. Okay, um, I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, the memorial page for those of our colleagues that have a uh, died due to COVID is up. And we are asking that if you have uh, knowledge of anyone who should be put on that page to email me a picture and 
and some narrative to go with it. And we will be very happy to, to put it, well, not happy, but we will definitely put it up on the memorial page. These people need to be remembered. Um, now our mental wellness team um, is, we're not up and running, but we're getting there. We have a, a lot of uh, licensed mental health professionals who are now willing to work with us as a referral base. Um, and we're looking for members, people that are, are interested in, in being part of our team, which really is going to be more of an educational type team to give information out to all the different agencies on uh, mental health, how to recognize uh, people in distress and all the resources that are out there. We also posted uh, a list of resources that was compiled mostly by Christine Alvarez from LaGuardia and it's a list of a great many agencies and individual practitioners that are available for first responders. Um, and if anyone has any more information on that, please send it to me. Um, and that's it for right now. And we so far, we're not meeting over the summer, but that may change. Okay, Marie, please unmute Scott. Scott, unmute yourself. I'm trying to unmute him. It's not working. There we go. There we go. Hello? Yes, we hear you. Go talk. Um, just a, a question about the COVID-related stuff. Um, I keep hearing rumor and scuttlebutt that there's going to be or there is a fund uh, for the families of those uh, responders that unfortunately passed secondary to COVID. I've not been able to, to pinpoint um, if there actually is or if it's just rumor and scuttlebutt. Um, first of all, does anybody know exactly a, if there butt. is such a fund? What? What exactly is scuttlebutt? Uh, well, I, I will send you a picture afterwards. I don't think it's for public consumption. Thank you so um, much. No problem. Um, but is there, um, so does anybody know if, if such a fund exists? Um, and if so, it might, be, uh, it might be prudent to push that out to the different agencies. Because um, uh, I think, unfortunately, we all know um, you know, many agencies experienced, uh, you know, loss of uh, their uh, volunteers, uh, team members, et cetera. So. Okay, thank you, Scott. Lower your hand. Please unmute James Downey. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, just for, for your information uh, purposes, um, driving around Queens, I came across a, an ex-ambulance, uh, 1999 Ford uh, wheeled coach. It was lettered for Hungry Monk Rescue Truck Incorporated. Uh, I contacted the people that run it. It is not an ambulance service. It's not a new uh, buff service. It uh, actually describes itself as a homeless outreach group, bringing hot meals, clothing, comfort, care, street medicine and social services to those in need. In addition to the uh, ex-ambulance, it's a white with a red stripe on it. They also have a uh, former Red Cross canteen truck, uh, white with a red stripe, and they also have a minivan. Again, they are not an ambulance service. They don't wanna be, they're homeless outreach, but uh, they are operating an ex-ambulance. Uh, the box uh, on the wheeled coach still has the uh, red lights on it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, lower your hand. Please unmute Travis from District 4. Hey, okay. uh, hey everyone. Um, Jim, just in reference to that and for everyone's clarification, um, he's actually a, a priest from a parish in Ridgewood. He does homeless outreach mostly in the Ridgewood and Glendale area. While he is in an ambulance that is parked mostly on Myrtle Avenue, he is known within the community to not be an ambulance resource. He does prepare meals and uh, try to do job placement for a lot of the homeless individuals. Thank you very much. Um, Jim and Travis, please lower your hands so that we know we're not calling you again. Is there anyone else who has any new business? Um, if I see no other hands, Ryan Greenberg, would you like to speak since you're hiding there? <laughs> unmute him for a minute give him a chance if he wants to say something let me, let me get to him hi oh he's you're on video muted. now Ryan, you're still muted sorry i'm just trying to find his name so i could unmute him he should be able to unmute himself 
Yes. There we go. I can unmute myself. Okay, great. Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I actually just want to say I stop in. So uh, with all the REMSCOs going on via WebEx and distance, uh, Steve and myself are going to try to to make more of the REMSCO meetings that we have the ability to to make and to answer any questions that are out there and outstanding. Um, I guess one of the biggest you know things that two reminders, we're still doing, we've now moved our weekly COVID update operational calls and educational calls to biweekly. Uh, there is one tomorrow. If anybody's not on that list that would be interested in being on the list, um, contact Maureen. She can give you the link to, to submit to have your name put into it, and then you'll at least get the notifications, join when you can. Um, we also welcome questions ahead of time. So if you do have questions for that, you know, feel free to, to send those in. Uh, the, the biggest question or one of the biggest questions we've gotten most recently is related to certifications and cards. Uh, just a, a quick update on those. So, you know, obviously the extension's out there, and for anybody who has an extension, we have not, and at the immediate moment, are not planning on reprinting cards as their cards expire. So what providers should be doing is speaking to their agencies and having them print out from the Health Commerce account um, their new certification expiration date. And so they can work with that. If your agency doesn't have an HCS account, again, go to your program agency and they can assist on getting you online in that so that you can take care of doing those searches. Uh, in addition to that, if anybody does have any questions about validity of a card and, and really just a best practice as you hire somebody new or, or anything in that regard, uh, go on to the Health Commerce account. It will give you a live answer on, on what the status is of that particular provider and when their expiration date is. So it's a, it's a great resource that's out there. Uh, we are moving more towards health commerce accounts for agencies and for providers, so do keep that one in mind that, you know, going forward, we're going to start putting more and more through that system and, and uh, hopefully do some more advancements as we continue to go more electronic in, in the future. Um, and, it, you know, the last part of this one is, is a request, and, and we just had our program agency call today. I'll also bring this up tomorrow, but, uh, you know, there's there's lots of guidance documents and things that, that obviously came out during COVID, uh, as well as, you know, different things or topics that we were asked about or asked for guidance on. Uh, what we're doing right now and one of the things that we are really focused on is putting together um, guidance documents for what would be phase four or, sorry, ooh, phase two uh, should one occur. And what we're asking is what agencies are looking for for guidance on so that when we do write these that we can write them now they will be written in such a way that it kind of has phases to them and the agencies and things can adapt to it as you know things are affected to their region as we know the different regions are affected differently um, and but we're working on those right now and hoping to get it up through the approval processes which do take some time so if there are ideas, suggestions, or things that you have that you think would be helpful for us to be working on, we would love to have that now. One, and just to understand a little bit on that one, you know, as, you know, as things are going on, it's a little bit harder. I'm just moving my so, screen over here. Um, as things are going on, it, it sometimes gets, you know, extremely busy and getting guidance document out uh, in as fast of a period of time as we'd like to is not always the easiest. And so we're really trying to do more pre-planning now, particularly as things are looking and, and to work on those documents now. About two weeks ago, I, I turned to the, the Bureau staff and we do um, meetings twice a week now uh, and said to them, look, we basically have 90 days. Uh, and, and that time period is based on that, you know, mid-September, beginning of October period. And it's 90 days to take this time and, and prepare for what possibly could be wave two, which we hope doesn't happen, but we want to prepare for it. And if it doesn't, then that's great. Uh, and we are now encouraging our agencies to take that same approach. Uh, two weeks ago, it was 90 days. Now we're at 75 days uh, to start preparing and start thinking about what phase two or what that second wave would look like, what policies, procedures, or anything you would need to put into place or try and get approved if you have an approval process. For us, having 75 days is actually very little time. Even at the 90-day mark, it basically left us 45 days because in order for us to put something through the approval process, we know it takes about four to six weeks. So we're really looking, you know, by August 1st to have some of these policies in the approval chain 
to start going through those reviews so that they can be out in time. So that's just a little snapshot. Um, some people don't think about it from you know number of days from now until then. Uh, we are encouraging you to you know to please think about that one um, and put it out there. And uh, you know from that side of things. Uh, last but not least, uh, probably another big common question right now is is there paper testing going on? And for the short term, there's not. So for short term right now, it is all computer based. It's uh, through PSI. Uh, however, one of the newest things that we did add last week, for those who don't know about it, is we now have remote proctoring for the CFR and the EMT exam. Remote proctoring means you can take it at home. Uh, if anybody wants, you can go look at Sean Graves' great post on the uh, Facebook page that um, he posted up about that and that it is true. It is true. Uh, the only downside to that one is you don't walk out with the temporary certification on that side of things. So just keep that one in mind. Uh, but I will let you know that uh, when that Sean did go to post that, I got an email from Public Affairs that says, does this person work for you? Because it's a very detailed answer. Um, and uh, I had to explain to him, no, he doesn't, but he's a very detailed person. So thank you, Sean, for the very detailed answer there. It, uh, it was perfect. Um, and that was it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, for everything that you're doing and, and for uh, the council work that you're doing and everything else. These have been some some challenging times, and nothing that uh, any of us expected. And um, I just can't thank you enough. So uh, we're here. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, Morty, I've already asked Marie to have you call me tomorrow. Let's you know follow up on that one, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, Ryan. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, just if you can make yourself a note, it would be very useful if members of SEMSCO who are alternates or on committees, but not on SEMSCO prop, proper, would be included on the mailing list so that we would know when meetings are going to happen. Uh, at the present time, it appears that um, even though we're alternates or on committees, uh, we're invisible. And um, you know, we have to make plans. So I appreciate that. Um, can you please um, unmute Marie Grace? I guess Cassiola, she has a question. Yeah, I was just curious if uh, New York State has received any information about the supposed outbreak of swine flu now in China? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have specifics on that one, short of what I was reading in some news articles, but, but uh, um, I have not gotten any specifics. I'm happy to, to take a look into it to see if uh, Epi has and, and what those are. I love Joe Shanker's face right now. Hey, you know, it's the next thing coming through. I got to tell you something. China keeps making some really good shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other unfinished business? Grace, you can lower your hand. Um, hearing no other unfinished business, number one, let me thank you all for your cooperation, uh, for willing to register. As you can see, we had a much more organized meeting because we can identify who is here. Um, and I think this was a very orderly way of running the meeting and in keeping of legal requirements. So I thank you for that. I don't know why you're all shy and you don't turn on all your cameras and, you know, so we can see that you're actually alive. It, it, it does good, do good for everyone's mental health, but if you're shy, at least we see your name. Um, anyway, um, I hope that this will be the last Zoom meeting. I hope that in September we'll be able to greet each other personally. Uh, I want you all to please stay safe out there. That's really the most important thing. Um, you, Of course, I don't need to tell you how grateful New York City should be okay, to everything that you and the providers out there do. Um, and we appreciate what Remsco is doing for us um, and all of you for participating. So thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great summer. And to my Facebook audience out there, have a wonderful summer as well. Take care. Marie, goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Langsam. And again, thank you to everyone. And uh, if we have any information to share, we'll be putting it on your email and we will have Zoom meetings if necessary. Uh, we're not closed during the summer, so reach out to us if you have any questions or any problems. And uh, have a great summer. Goodbye, everyone.
Thank you. Stay safe. Bye bye. Have a good summer. Bye bye. Sugar. What? Cheers. <laughs> I'm closing the meeting now. Bye. Oh, <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.